Third time's a charm. Here we go, and we are back, hopefully. This is another COVID Live update. Today's episode is called COVID-19, Love and Hope or Fear and Dot, Dot, Dot. Let's not pursue the dots, eh? (laughs) Hello and welcome. Good day, good eve, wherever you may be in the time zone zones. And uh, we're right here, coming to you live, and we're happy to be here for you. This feels to us the time to reflect get introspective, and focus on the love that is possible. Whatever it feels like externally, from our hearts, we can generate something magical. And that's what we're here to do for you, for us, for our entire human family. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video, if it's no longer live, but a later post. And, and, you know, we're going to go back to our roots a little bit. We, we've been talking about um, a lot of things outside ourselves, maybe things that we're not so much expert in, but we, we have a certain knowledge of. And we thought right now it'd be good to go back to how we started all this. There's been a lot of conversation recently about comparisons between um, 9-11 and, and what's going on now with the pandemic. And just like then, we have a choice is, as to how we respond. Are we going to respond out of love? Or are we going to respond... Out of, out of fear. Um, after 9-11, we had the choice to respond out of love or fear. We had the whole world galvanized around us. Even Iran was on our side, but we still chose fear with quite disastrous results. If, if you look around, trillions of dollars spent, millions of lives lost, war still going on and on and on. And now here we are at an even more significant crossroads being asked the same choice, love, or, love and hope or fear and more of the same. And Evan and I both come from a background where we feel pretty good about being authorities on love. Um, for 10 years, I've been posting every day what comes to me about love um, during my morning meditation uh, without missing a day and, and taking an ownership of what love is. That's why we put love in all caps. What does that mean? It means love that's foundational to everything. It means Love not external to yourself, but love that is what you are. You can't not be this. So once you strip it back to your foundation, then you can say, okay, what story do I want to write on top of this? And that's where we're at now. Let's strip it back to the foundation. Let's strip it back to the love we are. And then say, okay, what story do we want to write moving forward from here? Yeah, bear in mind, after 9-11, when we were really doing the the fear double down, um, we enacted the Patriot Act. And essentially what that did was give government the full license for complete surveillance and capturing that data and storing it indefinitely. And that infrastructure has just been built and built and built over these last 19 years since September 11th wow. happened in 2001. And again, we're at that same crossroads right now. So much of the world is literally on lockdown, almost kind of prisoners, if you will, in their own location, isolate, uh, you know, shelter in place, wherever that may be. And it sure feels like uh, whether it was nefariously conceived or not, it is an opportunity for anyone who wanted to seize power and capitalize off the opportunity of everyone being at home, being obedient, staying six feet apart from everyone. If, If the powers that be in the system itself thrives off our fear Oh boy, uh, us not even w- being willing to get within six feet of one another, that is pretty much fear on maximum, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure, uh, it can always obviously get worse, but it just feels like we are falling right in line where, you know, anything's possible now yeah. uh, to come, literally, to come between us physically, literally, and figuratively. So let's be mindful of that. Uh, so much about new age movements and forward thinking type metaphysical stuff is all about elevating consciousness, expanding consciousness. And um, so we look for the evidence of that. What does that look like in action? You know, you could look at Kip as the, the being love guy and I'm the doing love guy. And it's the yin and yang that pair so nicely and offer two perspectives on the same concept. And we were thinking recently that one 
you know, when we talk about doing love and, and bringing it into action in our everyday lives and writing the story that each one of us is writing and that we're collectively writing and how to make that a love story. We've been pleading all along. This is our life story to write. Let's make it a love story. But that is more challenging to accomplish when you're not coming from that place of being love. So really, in a way, what we're presenting a lot of the times is the advanced course. It's that, okay, so you've declared yourself evolved, awakened, enlightened. You've declared yourself a light worker and a forward thinker and a change maker and an influencer. Great, you're on the right track. You've come a long way from your, your initial programming and your fear paradigm. But now, with that declaration, it's time to put it into action and actually do love and determine what to transmit and emit and what actions to take and behavior to exhibit that will engender love, that will inspire positive emotional reactions in others, um, and really realize your own potential to be and do love. You know, and, and it is such a testament to love that Evan and I are even sitting here right now. If we weren't really coming from a place of really exploring what love is down to its foundational level, and then once you get to that understanding, what do you do with that? We might not be sitting here talking because our very first conversation about this, we were literally disagreeing, being, doing, doing, being. <laughs> no, no, but you know let's what? Let's take a moment and explain that for, for a second. Like literally the first time Kip and I ever <clears throat> spoke on the phone, four years ago, right about this time, yeah. Um, we, we had the, the classic debate, you know, it, it, it is, is what's more important, being or doing? What's more relevant? Where, where are we most effective at putting our focus on being or doing? And we ultimately, we're still in that same conversation, but it's no longer a debate. It's really hand in hand. It's the yin and yang. Absolutely. And it's two, two sides of that same love coin, if you will, that, that, um, being loved, the, the doing comes from the being. I think one, one I want to clarify one thing because a lot of people in, in the motivational world and the new age thinkers um, talk about, you know, we're human beings, we're not human doings. They're very adamant about that. We're not human doings. And well, what do they mean? And what does that mean? And what is the difference between being and doing? And I, I interpret one major significant element of that to be we're not human doings. In other words, don't be so focused on accomplishing things and I gotta get this done and I gotta blah, 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 and kind of running yourself ragged that you don't give yourself that chance to be and to experience and to receive. It's not all about the transmissions and it's not all about being so geared up that you can't even breathe like Kip just you know, exemplified. <sighs> to breathe is so important. Without breath, we have no life. <laughs> so let's start there. Let's start with the breathing. Let's start with the being. And from there, let's determine, let's make conscious choices about what we're going to be doing, that it comes from that place of being love. And the reason I even bring that up is because it really is the work that we had done before we ever met that allowed us to overcome an ego, mm -hmm. to allow us to improve our communication. I mean, where we were communicating then to now, it's just light years apart. We were so very not um, just completely locked to um, our understandings of things, but we had each written our own books on love. And coming from the place, mine was called The Eternal Journey of Being, Evans is called The Secret Powers of Love. Um, which is all about what you do with the love now. And so we, we were pretty, our ideas on this were pretty well formed. So, and, and we're big personalities and, and could easily have, you no, know, you don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't know. What, but no, here we are today and able to share with you an even more complete version of love than we could have four years ago. And it is all because we committed to love, not just the superficial, hey, love, it feels good, or I'm a love person, but really doing the work to get down to brass tacks to the base of who you are so you even know what love is. And let's face it, like so many, if not most people, our egos were adamant that we were right. And, and that still you know, rears its head, ugly or whatever you want to call it, um, from time to time. But now at least we can say with gratitude that we're more, a lot more aware of this. And so then we can make conscious choices. And I, and I want to talk for just a second about conscious choice, living with choice. You know, if in the absence of, of really thinking, contemplating and assessing options, we're just operating from the subconscious on autopilot. And when we do that, 
it's valuable, I feel, to recognize that that's coming from what was programmed in there. And that usually wasn't our choice. Unless we are so careful about everywhere we put our attention and really insert information that we feel would be valuable and constructive towards creating a more loving being who's going to be more love, exhibit more love in their expressions and transmissions, then we're, we're not living by choice. Living by choice means we are assessing our options, gathering data, looking at what our options would be and making a determination about potential outcomes of each and then choosing consciously in that moment the one that best aligns with who we want to be, who we want to present, what impact we want to have on others. So that's just a little tidbit about living with choice and, and about secret powers of love and, and, and doing love. And, and one thing I've, I've learned so much from, from Evan, um, and, and he's really great at teaching people this, we're lazy communicators, and, and it, it, we don't take time to really understand one another. We talk over each other. We're constantly defensive. We can never understand each other if we don't start working on breaking these barriers down. And Listening. Yeah, and, and it, it's been you know, just a testament, again, to love and the work that goes into love, communications that come from love, not war, because our existing way of communicating with each other is really a language of interrogation and war and fear. So when I ask you a question, instead of you just say, oh, you're curious about me, what did I do wrong? So you're hyper yeah, yeah. And, and, and in a way, rightfully so, because right. we are often on the attack. Absolutely. And so, so it's breaking down those barriers in our communication. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been, a, I, I thank you for that. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it really is about breathing and allowing space calming it down, letting things unfold more organically rather than trying to force them into what you think in that moment they, that you want them to be or that they should be. It it's really is a lot about slowing down, breathing, mm -hmm. and making choice, Keep coming from the heart. Is it the, the busy, crazy monkey mind that was programmed and subconscious in its you know, efforts? Or is it the heart where we stop and get quiet, connect with our deeper inner self, and then share what really is there to share that's going to be heartfelt, literally and figuratively, and inspired? And, and, and a lot of this comes down to us undoing the programming that, that we've been brought up with through our culture, through the system we're involved with. And a lot of times we're starting out here on the outer fringes of ourselves trying to go, okay, I fixed that problem, now I've got it figured out only to find out, no, I don't. I'm still, I'm still responding the same way. I'm still reacting the same way to things. It's not until, and this is where it's so important to really get into what love actually is, because to my understanding, and, and this isn't something I came up with, it's been shared by ancient wisdom teachers for literally millenniums. Probably one of my favorite is Sri Niskardat Maharaj, who is a very simple understanding. There is the ultimate truth, the ultimate source, the supreme reality. I call that love. And then everything outside that is story, whatever it might be. Whether you're Donald Trump or you're Jesus Christ, you're still telling a story of love as you've come into the story to be, you know, programmed to be. Now, only difference is once you're aware of what love is, you can make that conscious choice of what story you want to write. Instead of where fear, you're mostly being reactionary. And let's face it, all creatures are reactionary. I mean, this whole thing about fear, all creatures are wired to fear. If you look around you at the other creatures on the planet, uh, that snail has his antennae out at all times. And when something gets near, he goes right in that shell. Um, have you ever noticed how skittish other creatures are when you get near them? Um, the deer, they're so beautiful and so graceful and gentle. And yet they know exactly their comfort zone. And when you step one inch into it, now they're going to start going this way, away from you. So our natural instinct is to fear what is a potential danger to us. Um, so that's natural. That's useful. That's beneficial. That's protecting us and, and keeping us alive. It's a biological imperative to survive. And that is the, the instinct and the tool that we use to protect ourselves. However, <laughs> in societies that have institutionalized this whole concept of fear to keep people in line and keep society under control, it's become our modus operandi in, in most everything we do. And that's where we're hoping to help influence an upswelling of love. An up, because at the same time, whereas every creature is 
um, appropriately afraid of their environment and recoils and retreats. We, at the same time, are an ultra-social creature. E.O. Wilson, wonderful scientist, uh, calls it you social and there are only like 19 creatures on earth that he has classified as you social and we are one we're the only one at the primate level or beyond that has that designation many of them are insects ants are you social bees termites are you social and one of the criteria for being you social is that an individual is willing to put their life on the line sacrifice their very livelihood their biology for the tribe, for the community, and for the, the hive, the herd, whatever it is, uh, the colony, for ants. And we clearly are that. We will put on a uniform, tote the gun, and go to war, go on the front line, and be willing to accept the risk of getting killed for our tribe, for our, our country, for whatever a group that we are representing. So we are clearly ultra, ultra social. And along with that ultra sociability is the inbred, internal, like in our DNA, love, connection, that bond that humans have with one another. So it's a bit of a paradox there. We're, we're all a creatures wired to be a little afraid and sensitive and protective, and yet at the same time, the ultra-social creatures are wired to be so bonded they'll put their life on the line for one another. So let's be mindful of that and let's embody our true human nature as loving, connected, bonded beings. This is why we've evolved to develop such complex emotions. Life is a complex spread of activities and engagements and experiences and we have the capacity to respond to those with love. Yeah. Literally no matter what they are. We can be it's in horrific circumstances and still give love in return and what it takes to make that gap between oh my god reaction and wait i'm going to give a controlled response is something um that they call in psychology response flexibility so if you have response flexibility you can be flexible enough to not go with the knee jerk negative reaction but to sort of breathe through that and, and get through it, the momentary reaction, and then make it again a conscious choice. Wait, I'm a loving being. I want to give love. I don't want to hurt this person. I don't want to argue. I don't want to belittle them. I don't want to make them feel bad in any way. So then we need to figure out how to do that. And that's my writing, Secret Powers of Love and Secret Wisdom of Love, the quotes book. That's what they're all about, is different ways to do that, different uh, experiences that come along in life how we often handle them, how we could be handling them, new ways to look at things, new approaches. It's about um, adding a sensibility, making sense of the uh, irrational, unreasonable emotions that, that are senseless uh, oftentimes. And, and to add to um, what Evan was saying as far as us caring for one another, Margaret, uh, the anthropologist Margaret Mead, I, was, I, I shared a story uh, from her yesterday with Evan, um, one of her students asked her one time, you know, when did human civilization begin? You know, was it when we discovered fire, locked the agricultural revolution? When, when was it that human civilization? She, and she gave a very interesting um, and a little bit surprising response. She said, when we found the first bone, broke, uh, leg bone, that had been broken and healed. And you're going, well, what does that have to do? How can that possibly lead to human civilization or be the first signs of it? Well, that means any, no other animal could survive with a broken leg. They couldn't get water, they couldn't get food. This means that some other human being cared for this human being until it was able to then take care of itself again. It would go get its food, its water. That caring is innate to us. That is our, our true operating system, if you will. And it's really important for us to, again, strip that back beyond all the cultural differences, language differences, religious differences, um, di differences as far as wealth. Strip all that back, and that's really where we're coming from. That's really what we are. That's really what makes life worth living. Think about how good it feels when you help somebody, even if it's just the simplest thing as bringing a smile to her, uh, someone's face. We are hard, hardwired to care for one another. We are hardwired to love one another. My personal belief is one of the um, biggest challenges we have to overcome is somewhere along the line we really convinced ourselves that we're separate from everything else. We're in control of everything else. We are uh, different from everything else. We're the most more intelligent than anything else. You name it. We have somehow set ourselves apart. 
<laughs> and beyond everything. And it's just quite frankly an impossibility. And I really think it's at the source of not only the madness we see in the world around us, but the madness we feel in our hearts that's driving us to addiction, that's driving us to mental illness, that's driving us to spousal abuse, and on and on and on, because we are not being our authentic selves. To believe that, if, if you believe in physics and you believe in the Big Bang, okay, you believe everything came from this singular point, then how do you think that everything that came from that singular point you're not still connected to? It's like a seed that's planted in the ground grows a tree. The leaf on the farthest branch of this tree, the tiniest leaf says, you know what, I'm separate from this whole other tree. I didn't come from that seed at all. That's kind of mental thinking. And, and it's really fear-based thinking. It's saying, my ego is so terrified of scarcity, so terrified of, of death, of, of losing life, that you, you've created, we've created this story for ourselves that say we can control, we can stop death, we can manipulate our environment, we can control the universe. No, we can't. <laughs> we're, we're not equipped. <laughs> so uh, Kip was, brought this very concept up to me this morning. And as synchronicity would dictate, as always in our lives, I was behind a car today with a bumper sticker that said, I am part of the nature body. I love that. So the way I look at it, uh, and I, I guess I might have gotten this from Bruce Lipton or one, one of my great mentors and teachers, uh, that we are a single cell each one of us represents a single cell in the super organism yes. of humanity. Not to mention, it, it's pretty clear to me, I, I believe the evidence, that we are one human family. We, we come from the same ancestors. And so therefore, we're all literally cousins. And uh, not to mention, let's take that the next step further because I think it's, it's useful to mention that all life is connected. The uh, evogenio.com website has a beautiful graphic and it, it, it shows the tree of life, like all life, from the first single-celled organisms to humans and everything in between. And literally, you can click on any creature or plant or fungi or anything and it will tell you exactly how distantly related you are. Like, we are 235,000 cousin, 3 million times removed from a shark. We're literally related to the shark. It's in the DNA. So feeling and embodying that kind of connectedness, recognizing our role and our potential role as an upstanding, responsible, contributing, productive member of that family, that tribe. It's a massive tribe. And look at all that's happened in, in the, since the Industrial Revolution to <clears throat> unite us and unify us and enable communication and, and the globalization of everything from culture to economics to politics to media and connectivity and communication. We can connect through this means and many others with anyone in the world who has the means to connect, which is many, 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 many people, billions. So that presents an enormous opportunity for us to be unifying and working together towards common goals centered around love, survival, harmony, thriving, etc. And so we certainly are here to advocate that and promote that and support that and participate in that. And it just feels right. It feels like a responsibility, a duty, and it feels like it feels good. Just like it feels good to volunteer. It feels good to spread love. And certainly, SOUL is all about that. SOUL stands, the acronym SOUL stands for Soul, soul of, of Unconditional, unconditional love. love. Soul of Soul. <laughs> and so, that's, that's what we're all about. And we're grateful you joined us. Please chime in, comment, ask a question, uh, you know, share your thoughts, and we will respond in real time. We're looking at them right now, and we welcome you. We love you. We, we uh, offer you a warm, welcome greeting and invite you in, and let's do this. Let's have this conversation. Absolutely. Let's Let's share with one another, inspire one another, and let's determine actions that we can take to go out in the world or stay home in the world and do love, bring more love in the world, elevate consciousness, offer what we have to offer, bring our heart to what we do and share and say and transmit so that we can inspire more of same. Please, more love, less fear. <laughs> and, and Evan mentioned um, his book, The Secret Powers of Love, and it giving people tools to go out and put love into action in their lives. Um, both to themselves internally and externally. 
Um, my, my book was called The Eternal Journey of Being. I don't know if I'll ever do anything with it. It was um, really sort of my life's journey. And I didn't share it because my life's important. It has nothing to do with my ego or anything. It, I wanted people to understand I'm exactly the same. I've gone through many of the same hardships. I've done as many stupid things, if not stupider. I've, I've been a jerk. I've uh, done things I, I regret horribly sometimes. Um, although I've really learned not to live with regret, there's no point in holding on. Um, but I want, I, what I wanted to, people to take away from the book is embrace all of those things. Embrace everything that happens in your life because even the darkest experiences we have, those turn into really beautiful gifts when you're connecting with other people and you, connect, and you can connect with them from a place of shared experience. It's so much more powerful um, than people just thinking they understand what someone else has gone through. When you've actually had that shared experience, for me trying to communicate love to people, I wouldn't change anything, anything in my life because it's made me who I am. It's made me able to connect with people on a level that um, I, I don't think I could otherwise. And, and I, I really know that part of undoing that programming is being able to accept everything about yourself. Because if not, you're trying to find ways to rationalize your behavior or minimize it, embrace it in its entirely, accept it, learn from it, um, whatever the lesson may be, and, and, and have it there as a, as a tool for you to use when you're communicating. That, the, the journey for me led me from this strange experience I had with infinity when I was 12 to where I'm at now in sharing love and seeing that these things are very much synonymous, that we are limitless beings of unlimited potential who can tell any story we want as soon as we remove the blocks of fear that we programmed into ourselves. How about a song? In fact, this is a good song. <laughs> love will still be here. And the, the, the song is really that love is what we are. Love is what everything is. And when we're gone, when this earth is gone, when this universe is gone, before this universe existed, love was still here. And it'll still be here when we're not around. <laughs> Changes go and changes come In the story we learn to go with the flow Sometimes the river rushes on by And others it takes forever to roll on slow I, I roll on slow Journey, this is a life. Stop looking for meaning, none can be found. There is no fight in it, don't even try. Love is to be here when you're not around. This is a journey. They mend and then they break And into love we just can keep on falling They melt in with pleasure mm, Till the end A force greater than ourselves Always calling Can't you hear it calling? This is a journey, and this is a life. Stop looking for meaning, none can be found. There is no fight in it, don't even try. Love is to be here when you're not around. This is a journey.
the beyond Where the illusions disappear, baby And the reflection's gone The reflection's gone This is a journey and this is a life Stop looking for me Love is to be here when you're not around. This is a journey, and this is a life. Yes, love will still be here. Don't you doubt it. <laughs> and um, we're grateful you've joined us. Hey, Howard, all the way over there from the UK. What do you say? Well, I see what you say. Loving the song, too. <laughs> cool. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, if, if we can inspire and, and uh, bring a little joy to people's lives uh, in any way, what we say, what we do, what we play, then we are warmed in our heart because that's, that's clearly what we're all about. Um, none of this negative fear stuff making people feel bad and stressing them out and everything. Um, there's plenty of that. And, and, you know, this really is, and the reason we're bringing this up and talking about this is we have an opportunity, an unprecedented opportunity in my lifetime, and, and quite frankly, anyone I've talked to his lifetime, um, people that are literally 90 years old have never been through anything like this. This is our opportunity to, to really think about what we're doing and where we're going and assess what do we want to be? What's our story going to be? If we want it to be the same as we've been telling, well, the outcome doesn't look particularly good with all the information that I, I know about as far as climate change, economic collapse, on and on and on. This has given us a reprieve. It's given us a time to stop, assess, take a deep breath, realize we don't have to be producing and consuming all the time. We don't need to be employed the way that we have been, as Jacques Fresco pointed out from the Venus Project. With technology, um, we, 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 need, we really re we need to rethink our system. Mm -hmm. um, this has shown us... The system cares about the system. This isn't to judge the system. It's where it's gotten us to where we're at today. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, where do we go from here? Nature and the universe is giving us an opportunity again, like we've never had before. This isn't happening to us. It's happening for us. It really does feel like an opportunity and a chance to make new choices and uh, decide where we want to go rather than just going or being led or blindly exactly. following or just allowing things to happen to us. Um, so, it feels like it, it, again, has the potential to be a great crossroads for, for our human family, for humanity, for the planet, because of the, the amazing impact that we humans have on the planet. And, you know, the, the question, of course, comes up, well, what can I do? What can any one of us do? And how do we change things? And, you know, a lot of people recognize we, we want change. We're not necessarily happy or content with the way things go in the world or the way leadership works or the suffering that we're witnessing or um, just the, the limitations of the system that we've created. It, there's so many beautiful, wonderful things in the world, not just natural, but man-made as well. Um, we, our technology is a powerful tool. Um, our intellect is, is unmatched. We have these 1,400 cubic centimeter rocket science-powered brains. The question is, what do we do with them? How do we apply that intelligence? You know, we can use it to capitalize off one another and exploit one another and, and the planet, or we can use it to offer love, to share and nurture and care for and express compassion and participate in what our dear friend Steve Behrman refers to as the great uprising. Uprising. I love that. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's the king of the puns, that guy. Um, he's so, so funny. Yeah. So that, that's really what this is all about is... is um, quote unquote, capitalizing off the opportunity that we are presented with right now while we are sheltering in place, isolated from one another largely, uh, have time to be reflective and contemplative and to plot our next moves. And so that's, that's where Kip and I look at ourselves as dot connectors. 
Um, you know, we're, we're not necessarily the authority or experts on things scientific or technological or even societal, cultural and, and uh, political and how that stuff runs. Um, we don't profess to be and I don't think we really want to be and that's fine. But we are versed, if you will, in many, many things. We are fairly well read and, and seen plenty of documentaries uh, to, to be exposed to a lot of good and varied information. And we feel that we are able to connect some dots, uh, create a through line of what some of the best of the best are offering us. The, the influencers like Bruce Lipton and Jack Fresco and uh, Joe Martino over at Collective Evolution and uh, the E.O. Wilsons of the world who have shown us our true nature as ultra social creatures and um, uh, people like our Jay over at um, One Community Global, they're doing some beautiful work over there. So there are, there are so many people, there are 8 billion people nearly in this world and so many are participating in endeavors that are designed and effective at being part of and accelerating the, the up-wising, the expansion and elevation of consciousness and the, the telling of the next chapter of the human story. This is all one continuing story, but we clearly have the opportunity to turn that page. And on that next page, we write, and then the humans decided to dot, dot, dot. And yeah. that's where we get to fill in the blank. We yeah. get to write that next page and the next chapter of the story. And it can be anything we want it to be. It can be completely yeah. different from what it is now. The limitations that inherently exist in capitalism and the money system are, are overwhelming. They're so limited. It's, it's a catch-22. It, it's such a tight spot. It's a Ponzi scheme. Look at this. Th just think of this one thing. Automation, robotics, artificial intelligence are here right now. Okay? Jobs are being lost. And yet at the same time, people are saying, we need jobs. We need more jobs. Everyone's panicking because the unemployment number just doubled in the last few days. We, we don't need unemployment, we need jobs. We need an opportunity to earn a living. But how far can that go? How much opportunity is there for 8 billion to earn a living when automation can be doing the jobs for us? And so, how much do you need to produce and consume? <laughs> yeah, that too. But the, the point is, I think we are, we are totally ready for a new way of thinking to uh, a, a new chapter in the story that accepts acknowledges and accepts the reality of we can't all work. In the 50s, Buckminster Fuller made it very clear that if every human who was capable to work worked a full uh, eight hour day, a 40 hour week, we wouldn't be able to move. We'd be so <laughs> surrounded by stuff piled up everywhere because let's face it, Sounds we are familiar. a productive creature. We're hyper productive. And we don't just build a little dam like a beaver or a little hive like a bee. We build skyscrapers all over the places and bridges and highways and canals, etc. We build rocket ships, etc., etc., etc. We fill the sky, the seas, the land, and now space even. So what do we do with that, that brilliance and that capacity to produce? What do we do with it? Are we going to keep doing things the way we're doing and be exclusionary and, and exploitative and enable and cause the suffering of others? Or are we going to figure out a way to unite, care for one another and nurture ourselves, one another and the beautiful blue ball that we call home? We're not just hanging here floating in space. We are hurling through space at 70,000 miles an hour, spinning around, circling around the sun while we, while we do it. Why does gravity hold us on the earth? Why aren't we falling off? You know why? Because we're spinning so fast, nothing can fling off. It's like locked on. That's how gravity works. So I find great freedom in recognizing that. We are hurling through the blackness of space. No matter how bright the daylight is here from the sun, we are still hurling through the blackness of space at unimaginable speeds. And yet, look, our hair isn't even blowing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and back to, you know, one of the original things I was mentioned, as far as what I'm trying to share, as far as the truth of love, um, there's a philo non-dualistic philosopher named Ken Wilber, and he basically believes in sort of bringing, connecting all the dots. Um, he defines what I'm trying to share as the ultimate truth versus your relative truth. 
I define it as supreme reality, source, love, whatever, and story. So why, what does that mean? It means that now with quantum, when we look in the mirror, we can say with some certainty, there's literally nothing there. So what are we? When we strip it back to the basics, we're the stories we're telling ourselves. We have mm. absolute control mm. to write every story we want. But as long as we're locked in fear, we believe we're the body, and we believe that we're the ego, and we believe that we're the mind, it's going to be, very, it's going to be a great challenge for us to, to rewrite the story. But if you recognize it, I'm not the body, I'm not the ego, I'm not the mind, I'm not even the consciousness, I'm not the awareness, I'm not even the beingness, I'm not, the non, I'm not even a non-being. I am the source of everything. These are my stories. I am literally writing these for myself to experience. I like to look at it as we are love experiencing what it can never be, finite in many. When we wake up to that, we ground ourselves in that truth, that ultimate truth, then we go, okay, what story do I want to write today? Then it becomes a journey of joy. And, and we're removed from judgment. That's what I see that separates us from so many, uh, from our animal brethren, is we judge all of the things. It's like, you know, if uh, we, uh, a hurricane or an asteroid in the planet, these things are evil and they're bad. No, they're just things that are happening. There's a constant reciprocal process happening. The, 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 the zebra doesn't hate the lion when it, you know, happens to kill one of the weaker in its herd. In fact, a lot of times it'll be laying down after it's satisfied. It's, we're the ones who are placing these value judgment on life's process because we've chosen to be separate from life, because we've created this illusion that we're separate from life. Or, we're not. Or we've been programmed. Yeah, programmed. True, true, and true, that's, true, you know, going back yeah, yeah. to our point about choice, and are we yeah. making a conscious choice, or are we just going through the motions of what was given to us and input there? Uh, garbage in, garbage out. Don't forget, basic computing. <laughs> but let's face it, everything is subject to interpretation. What am I? Who am I? Well, there are 7.8 different versions of that. You know, what is this? There are 7.8 different versions of that. What is it? What is it made of? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it cold? Is it warm? Does it have relevance? Is it insignificant? Every single thing is subject to interpretation and it's based on our own perspective and our own perception of what it is. And uh, I think that's our cue. <laughs> it really is. We want to do another song for you. We're, we're, here to do, we're here to give love. Okay, we're here to do love. We're here to play some music, to do some talking, to share. Feel free to chime in the conversation. Yes. Say hello, ask a question, make a comment. Hello, Michael. Hello, Helen. Hello, Phil. Hello, <laughs> Howard. Hello, Marilyn. Is everyone still here? Bonnie, Karen, much love to everyone. Welcome, welcome. We're so grateful and glad you've joined us. We hope to inspire you. We hope to give you some comfort, some love, some inspiration. We want to nurture you with compassion and heartfelt sentiment because that's what we are here on earth to do. That's what we are in this body to do. That's what we are telling this story to do. And that's what we are on this Facebook Live right now to do. And before we start the song, yeah. I want to give a little backstory. So when, when I was 12 years old, I had an experience where I, I grew up in Washington State. We were, I was a farm boy. There was no out-of-body experiences after projection. That's exactly what happened to me. I won't go into a whole bunch of detail in the backstory, uh, backstory mm -hmm. to it, but I left my body. I floated out over my bedroom. I hovered over my body. I wasn't in my body. Off the, out of the house, across the solar system, out of the galaxy, out of the universe. Then I was turned into the universe and it was finite. It fit in my head and I could see how everything flowed and worked together. Then I was turned out to the blackness of infinity. I didn't know that's what it was at 12, but I just realized there can't be a beginning or end to anything. It took me literally most of my adult life to figure out why I knew it was profound. I knew it was important. I knew it had opened me up to, to acceptance and wisdom in ways that um, I couldn't understand at that age. But what now I realize the gifts that that gave me were two really important ones. One, by being faced with the unknown, the unknown became something I'm not afraid of. It's something I embrace. It's exciting to me that there I could be for a trillion existences and I'm no closer to the end of this journey than I am right now. I'm no closer to an ultimate answer. It's always about the journey. It's never about the destination. It's always about the question, not the answer. And the other thing it gave me, which leads us into our song, is it gave me that far off earth perspective to see how everything works and flows together, how the solar systems move and the galaxies move around one another, and to see us as almost a clot in the system right now, who said we're apart, and, and, and just to see how things work and to humble yourself, because far enough away, there is no human being. There's just one thing happening. We're not separate things. 
we are one thing having the same experience. Okay, wait just one second. Are you sure your dad didn't slip any acid into your Coca-Cola at the Seahawks game? I'm, I'm pretty sure. He might have dropped me on my head as a child, though. Yeah. <laughs> that could have cost it. Okay, here's our <laughs> punky tune, Matter of Perception. Perception. <clears throat> oh, a matter of perception. I want to feel you from the inside Sounds kinky Let me step inside your mind So I can feel your heart beating Does it beat just like mine? Living in judgment and hypocrisy that. We're the blind leading the blind It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see only delusions of the mind. Two, three, four. I want to know the real you. The you we all try to hide. I know it's hard to be honest. Cause we all ruled by ego's pride. Freedom's just the truth away As love's reality There is no divide It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see only delusions of the mind It's all a matter of perception Only delusions of the mind It's only delusions of the mind It's only delusions of the mind It really is our story to write. Let's turn the page and then the humans dot, dot, dot. Let's fill it in. It's our life story to write. Let's make it a love story. Let's live with conscious choice. Let's embody secret powers that love is holding for us and offering for us and are readily available for us. We just need to tap into that. Get quiet, take a breath. What a perfect opportunity this pandemic isolation has given us to do that very thing, to reflect, contemplate, and determine new actions to take. Slow it down, take a breath, protect yourself, stay safe and clean and, and among people who you really love and care about, and take the time to think about what, what you're gonna do next. Who do you wanna be in the world? What can you do? What can you offer? What, how can you embody your role as a responsible cell in the superorganism of humanity? How can you be the best cousin you can be to every other human on earth, every plant, animal, and fungi on earth? How can you give more love and more respect and more nurturing? Be kind to yourself. Embrace this eternal journey of being you're on. When you're coming from fear, you're not in flow. Let the resistance go. And it, and it, it reminds me of, um, of a vision I had uh, probably about 
five or six years ago, maybe more, I was getting ready to go do a, a shoot somewhere, I think San Mateo, and um, all of a sudden this washed over me. You can no longer alter the river's course, and if you try to swim upstream, you will drown. The best that you can do is gather those of light and love and reconvene at the bottom of the falls where the rebuilding will begin. I feel this is us gathering those of light and love. I feel this is our time to rebuild. Are you a being of light and love? Are you ready to declare yourself a being of light and love, to proclaim your own intention to participate in the great upwising and the great Upwise. nurturing of, of the human spirit, the physical, biological human, and this beautiful planet that we are all responsible for, for being the custodians to care for it. And it's our, it's our choice at the end of the day uh, how we want to embody that role. And again, love isn't something outside yourself. Love is what you are. Sounds like a song. Love is what you are. We don't actually have no. that song yet, but this Give is how Give us a couple minutes for right now. You know, we're having a conversation. We say, well, you know, it's all a matter of perception. Oh, wait, that's a song. There we go. <laughs> so um, lots more music coming your way, of course. Our band, our duo plus Soul Twin Messiah. Um, we have our EP, uh, which is the soundtrack to our film. Uh, um, the film is a world worth imagining, and that's the soundtrack. And um, we have another EP coming out. Maybe you don't know. We have about six or so shows that we make. And uh, just check out our YouTube channel, Soul Documentary, for, um, to watch some of those. And uh, each one has its own theme song. So uh, we're demoing and preparing for the uh, professional recording of the complete songs of each of those show jingles, show themes. And uh, so that's, that's coming soon. But tons of music on our, our website, souldocumentary.love, and our YouTube channel, Soul Documentary. And uh, we, we welcome you. We'd love if you'd join us by liking the page, following the social media, subscribing to the YouTube channel, taking a visit to the website, sharing it with friends, absorbing it, basking in it. We have given so much of ourselves, <clears throat> our hearts, so much love to you, whoever you are, you. We are doing this for you and we invite and welcome you in and we have so much love to share and so much good information to help you on your journey, on your eternal journey of being and your recognition of yourself as a love being and the opportunities that you have to express and transmit love in all that you say and do. And we invite you wholeheartedly to participate in that action. And if we could us. ask one favor, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We only need 27 or so to reach the thousand mark. We really like to get there and we'd really appreciate your help. <laughs> yeah, to we want to go live on YouTube, <laughs> but we're stuck on Facebook because they don't have uh, limitations, requirements for uh, minimum subscribers. So, um, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you get a chance. If you think about it, tell your friends. Uh, you know, a, a, a long time ago, a few years ago, we've been at this for four years, and a few years ago, um, uh, our creative director, John, said, um, you know, you, you got to know, know your audience. Who are you speaking to? Um, and we've said all along, we're speaking to you. We're speaking to our human family. Yeah. You, you don't need to perceive of yourself or declare yourself anything. Just come on in. Yep. We welcome you. And... Um, we, we always wanted to create content that made people go to their friends and go, dude, dude, you gotta watch these guys. You gotta see this. These guys are dot, 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 whatever your own uh, insert Mental playful patience. adjective here. And uh, so tell a friend, if you think we're crazy or cool or loving or weird or whatever, say, you gotta check these guys out, you know? And maybe there is something to what we're yeah. saying about all this love stuff and its secret powers. And, and again, the, the, this isn't anything new. If, if you're a Christian, this is what Jesus was saying. If you're a Buddhist, this is what Buddha was saying. If you're Hindu, well, you name any god or whatever. It's like there's a million of them. Yeah. It's always about the love. If you're a realist it's and always about science the love. and stuff, listen to yeah. what E.L. Wilson is there saying. You're an ultra-social creature. Let's live 
Let's it, let's act that way. Hell, let's Einstein was that. rocking the love. Yeah, Einstein was. He really the was. Love. He, he read really that, was. That letter to his daughter. Yeah, <laughs> he was a complete. He was a complete human Again, being. Again, we're, we're we're dot connectors. Yeah. We we do a lot of research and and reading and documentary watching, and we're here to share just the best of that information and the conclusions that we draw from it, so that you can benefit from that that work that we've put in and that research we've done and we want you to benefit from that we want to give benefit to as many people as we can touch we love you we care about you and we're here to nurture you with compassion and support and and i want we're here for you so chime in uh ask your questions make your comments and we will do our best to respond and and give of ourselves um, in return and and I want to give a shout out to the the people who might not consider them maybe opposed to or think that we're somehow liberal snowflakes or we're not judging anybody. This isn't about politics. This isn't a right or left thing. This is about all of us. This is about our entire human family. There is no judgment. Let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's get to know one another. Mm -hmm. Let's learn to care about one another again. If we don't do it together, we're we won't rise together, and most likely we will fail together. Look, we, we have leaders in this world of individual countries or municipalities or different districts or whatever group you want to you know, isolate, but the fact of the matter is we are one human family, we are one species. Who represents that? Where is the spokesperson for humanity? Where is that, that one individual on which all the love in the world converges and they represent all that we represent? good, bad, black, white, you know, et cetera. Um, that's, that's hopefully what we're here to embody and represent, that voice of all of us, the voice that says, I want to live, I want to feel good, I want to thrive, I care, I matter, and I want to participate in being an ultra-social creature with all the rest of the eight billion of us. And that's clearly the message that we're offering so yes whoever you are wherever you are wherever you're coming from whatever your program represents whatever you believe in whatever you're doing murderers rapists come on over loving caring beings volunteers nurses and doctors come on over world leaders and anarchists come on over literally seriously we are here to embrace all because at the end of the day, it's like we can't, we, we're judging each other or we don't even understand someone's journey, how broken they may have been at the mm. earliest forma formative parts of their life. Maybe they never had a mother ever touch them and they grow up to be a heinous human being. Mm -hmm. Let's, but that's not their fault. It's the system. It's the, it's the story that we've been programmed into. We need to have a lot more compassion and understanding, a lot less judgment because none of us are perfect. Yeah, we can blame the parents and we'd be right, but then we'd have to blame their parents and their parents. their parents. It's a legacy of trauma we've all inherited. And if you're for victims, if you believe in victims and supporting victims, when you go to support the victim of the rapist and hate the rapist, you're hating another victim because I'm pretty confident there aren't many people who would force themselves <clears throat> on others or harm others intentionally who weren't themselves harmed, harmed before. So okay. think about that. Where's your compassion? How much compassion can you cultivate? Can you love the perceived enemy? Can you hug the rapist? You know, we're talking about a love that is almost unfathomable in this society, this cultural climate, but it's there, it's accessible and available. Yes, protect yourself. Yes, don't place yourself in harm's way. Don't, don't lock yourself in a bedroom with the rapist, but in company and protection and in the appropriate environment, Let's show some compassion for those who are treated as pariahs. Because in this 8 billion human family, there are no pariahs. There are only members of the family. Think about that. As our, as our friends, um, Harold Becker and John Goltz at the Love Foundation have been sharing for literally two decades now. It's about love that's unconditional. And that, if, if that's not the love we're talking about, then we're talking about something other than love. And, and, and I've, people are so confused about what love is. They're confused with like and lust. And, Love is a very specific thing. It's been, again, passed down from wisdom teaching to wisdom teaching to wisdom teaching for millenniums. We have bastardized our language. Our words have lost, like our currency, uh, their meaning, so they have no value. Just as our currency has no value because it's not attached to anything real. Things have meaning. Words exist for a reason. They're the only way we have to communicate right now. Love means a very specific thing. It is what we are. It's the foundation of all life. Without love, there is no us. And love is us.
Let's embody that. You know, we know what the alternative looks like. It's isolating. It's lonely. It's combative. It's destructive. It's exploitative. It's not helping any of us thrive. So can we embody the alternative? Can we recognize what the alternative is and that it's available to us? Can we access it? Let's see. This is what we are committed to doing. Yep. And we invite you to join us. Um, both of our feeds are full of, of information and inspiration and words of love. Uh, the Soul page, Kit Baldwin's page, Evan Hirsch's page, the Just Love page, um, and our website at souldocumentary.love is certainly full of that love. We and join the Soul Tribe. We are a nonprofit media outlet. We make music and videos and shows and give information. We've both worked on books, not yet available, although information from those books is being released in the form of our quotes and our feeds and the things that we post. So it all comes from the heart. It all comes from some very high inspiration and some very deep contemplation for us to find a way to represent love in a world saturated in fear and divisiveness. If divide and conquer is an effective way to rule over people, boy, have, has it worked and it's been very successful. But it will, it will test your interpretation of the word success. Does success mean accomplishment of significance that is beneficial? Or does it mean I had to stomp on all kinds of people to get what I have that they then don't have? So everything is subject to interpretation, as we shared. It's all a matter of perception. And um, this is our chance to awaken to the perceptions we're having and do our best to evolve them forward to something more loving and something more unifying. It's a very important concept. And, and to echo Evan, this is literally 24-7 for us. It's been 24-7 for me for a decade. It's all that matters to me I, is, is sharing love with you guys and helping you wake up uh, in whatever way I can. It's, it's, it's my purpose. It's my role here in the story. I don't know how to do anything else. It's what I'm supposed to be sharing. <laughs> sure, you know how to do lots of things, man. <laughs> he writes songs, cooks, you know. I don't even know how that stuff happens. It's like half the time. I just open it up and love happens. <laughs> yeah, the, creative, the, 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 the mind has such amazing potential to create and envision and imagine. We really, really do. We are the most imaginative creatures. And look at all this beautiful, magical, wonderful, inspirational culture that we have around us and what we've done with technology and, and, and quote progress when it really serves us and is something that forwards our health and our thriving and our connection. So keep the love alive, please. The world needs you. We need you and we welcome you. And we're here again to inspire you, to inform you. We're here to mentor you. Get in touch. You have questions, you want more information, you want guidance, we're here to serve. So thank you so much for tuning in and for spending some time with us today. We're going to keep, keep doing the lives as, as much as we can or are inspired to do. Uh, you know, when the mood strikes and the time's available, we're working on a lot of things right now. The music and the shows and keeping videos posted up on our YouTube channel, Soul Documentary, and building that audience and, and again, just spreading the love, spreading the message, spreading the word, and helping to inspire more unification, mutual support, and nurturing of ourselves, one another, and this precious planet we call home. There's not really a planet B that we know of right now. No, there's not. So let's make the most and the best of the one we've got. As, as uh, Bill Maher once said, like, what, is, what does Mars have that Earth doesn't? Oh, it doesn't have food, doesn't have air, doesn't have water. And yet we're going to Mars from here. Why don't we take care of this place first? <laughs> let's show some love here. It's shown us a lot of love. Yeah, how many trillions will it cost to colonize Mars versus how many trillions would it cost to fix up the Earth and make it a healthy, thriving you know, paradise. <laughs> this is going on, but it just reminded me of the, um, the sequel documentary that you just turned uh -huh. me on to. And Dave Fleming, what I, one of the things I loved about it was how they showed the timeline of the Earth and how, what a short period of time. We've been here in, in the course of a 4.6 kilometer journey, which they used to show the billions of years, the 4.6 billion years of the life existence of the Earth itself. We've been here of that 4.6 kilometers, five millimeters, yeah. five millimeters. We've done all of this. It's, it's an 
absolutely beautiful documentary. It's called The Sequel, and it's on Empathy Media. So I found it through Facebook. You can watch it on Facebook. I didn't find anywhere else on the no. internet to watch it um, that way. So um, just look up The Sequel, Empathy Media, on Facebook, and do yourself a favor. Do us all a favor. Do, do something for your human family. Watch the sequel and really let it sink in. Think about it. What can I do to embody my nature as an ultra social being, as a tribal creature, and one who wants better for our human family? What are we going to do when the robots take all the jobs? How do we eat then? Do we want jobs or do we want a new way to care for one another? And globalization is already here. It's not a thing off in the future. Economies are globalized, culture is globalized, media is globalized, politics are globalized. Um, so the question is, what do you want globalization to look like? Is it an authoritarian, totalitarian, tyrannical regime? Or is it a thriving human metropolis paradise in which we nurture one another? That's our choice to make. One is love. One is clearly fear. Oppression is fear. Enslavement is fear. Ex exploitation is fear. Unity is love. Harmony is love. Nurturing is yes. love. Compassion is love. Caring is love. Thriving is Creating love. Creating is love. Think about it. What is love? What is fear? And how can I cultivate the former? And how can I evolve forward from the latter? And what that film really made me realize when he laid it out like that and the amount of, unfortunately, destruction that we've wrought on this planet in that five millimeters that's literally reshaped the planet in a way no other species ever have, no other um, event on this planet ever has. In, in the immediacy of our impact in this short period of time is, is undocumented on the planet's history. And what it made me realize is that if we come from love instead of fear, though the... All the, energies that, all the energies that we've used to destroy and consume will be transformed to creating and sharing. Hey, you do a beautiful live, brother. <laughs> I just realized. Love you guys. Let's stand up and hug for these guys. Hard hugs. Always go to the right. Let me get my butt pack on. Nothing to do with a hug, mind you. Just... <laughs> all right, man. Much love. That's, Much all, love that's a hug all. for all of you. Oh. Go hug someone near you. And um, spread the love. It's what you're born love, to do. Love, love, love.